This video was sponsored by Brilliant. There was some recent article about how I'm such a great marketer. Um, and like, I say the stupidest things. That can't possibly be true. Uh. <laughs> Elon Musk, the bug-eyed salamander who paid for the title of founder at so many wonderful companies like Tesla and SpaceX. Over the years, he has accumulated an exorbitant amount of wealth, making him the richest man in the world right now and an exorbitant number of toxic male worshipers, making him the meme lord of Twitter, I guess. Unless you've been living under a rock, you might have seen his name in the news lately. He was going to buy Twitter. Breaking news, Twitter has been sold to Elon Musk. And then he didn't. Backing out of his $44 billion agreement to purchase Twitter. He said he was going to buy Manchester United, but He's not. World's richest person has a history of erratic tweets. A shirtless photo had us all once again wondering if all billionaire CEOs are actually robots in human suits. What are, what are you guys making for dinner? Brisket and ribs, I hope. Delicious. Oh, and have I mentioned his kids yet? Yeah, he's got 10 kids. I would make a joke about how his pullout game is weak, except most of his kids are from IVF. That includes, most recently, the twins he had by IVF with Siobhan Zillis, one of the top executives at Neuralink. Oh yeah, Neuralink. Remember Neuralink? Yeah, me neither. Neuralink is a company that Musk co-founded in 2016, alongside biomedical engineer Max Hodak and bioengineer Paul Marola. It splashed onto the scene with bold claims and big promises about how they wanted to do neuroscience differently and look good doing it. It's gonna be like the apple of neuro devices, a silicon chip in your head from Silicon Valley. According to their own website, they are creating the future of brain interfaces, building devices now that will help people with paralysis and inventing new technologies that will expand our abilities, our community, and our world. Aww. Basically, their shtick is that they're going to supercharge your brain power by developing high-tech brain-computer interfaces. Some of their promo material indicates that their main goal is to revolutionize prosthetics technology, solve paralysis, and allow people to use their brains to control prosthetics that move and act like a real hand or foot. That is legit, a very cool and valuable idea. But some of their goals are less wholesome and more sci-fi dystopian future. Any, any kind of brain-related disorder, uh, in, in, or, or a spinal disorder, if you know somebody who's uh, broken their neck or broken their spine, uh, we can solve that with a chip. We will gradually increase the um, issues that we solve until ultimately we, we can do a full uh, brain machine interface, uh, meaning that we can achieve a sort of symbiosis with artificial intelligence and we can effectively have the option of merging with AI. I think even in a benign AI scenario, we will be left behind. Your limbic system is kind of your primal needs and wants, and it's like where your, a lot of your emotions are coming from. And then the cortex is like the, the thinking, planning part of your brain. We can have a tertiary layer, which is the kind of a digital superintelligence layer. And in fact, you, you already have this layer. So it's your phone and your laptop. And the constraint is just the, how well you interface, the, the, the input and output speed. The output speed is especially slow since most people are typing with thumbs these days. The thing that will ultimately constrain our ability to uh, be symbiotic with AI is bandwidth. After, after solving a bunch of brain-related uh, diseases, there is the, the existential, uh, it's mitigation of the existential threat of AI. Or, yeah, this is the point of it. Now, some people might get off on the idea of having access to dystopian sci-fi technology. I can't wait till that says Neuralink charging. <laughs> Who needs ethics when you've got a cool microchip in your brain, right? But beyond the ethical concerns around hooking up your consciousness to the internet, it's also just 
plain unrealistic. Like I said, Neuralink's whole jam is creating futuristic brain-machine interfaces, also called brain-computer interfaces, or BMIs, or BCIs. We've actually talked about BCIs in a past video, in the context of whether or not Luke Skywalker's Just Like a Real Hand Hand would actually be possible. Now, the idea of BCIs are nothing new. In fact, the term was coined way back in 1973, when Elon Musk was a wee toddler of two years and the internet was just a sparkle in the American military's eye. BCIs are exactly what they sound like, direct connections between a machine or computer and your brain. Right now, BCIs are mostly discussed in the context of advanced neuroprosthetics, which include prosthetic devices such as cochlear implants or artificial limbs that can be connected to and controlled by the brain and nervous system. Some advanced prosthetics use external controls that can be activated by the remaining muscles in a person's arm or leg to adjust and move as needed. But these devices tend to have limited dexterity and sensory feedback. So while they tend to be super durable and quite handy, they don't really mimic the experience of an undamaged human limb. Other designs use external electrode patches that can be placed on the skin. These patches pick up electromyographic signals or the electrical currents that your skeletal muscles generate when they contract, and they use that in order to operate the limb. Now, these devices still aren't super dexterous, but the nice thing about them is that they are very non-invasive, meaning that no surgery is required. But if you want to get an artificial limb moving and working like the real thing, you have to dive in deep. Motor control and sensory processing are super complicated. So if you want to closely mimic a human limb, then you've got to get into the actual neuronal pathways that control it. And that is where BCIs come in. BCIs use implanted electrodes, either in your peripheral nerves, like your arm or leg, or directly into the brain, to record the electrical signals produced by neurons, and then use extremely complicated algorithms to translate that information into a command that can, for example, allow you to open and close a robotic hand. Some highly advanced BCI and neuroprosthetic systems can even provide sensory feedback by translating information gathered from specialized sensors on the robotic limb into electrical signals that are transferred back to the brain via more electrodes. Or in the case of devices like cochlear implants, they can translate auditory information in the environment into meaningful signals for the brain. So the idea of BCIs has been around for a while, and not just in science fiction. Some of these advanced devices have existed for longer than Neuralink's been around. I mean, we made that Luke Skywalker video back in 2017. But the way they talk about this stuff, they make it sound like Neuralink invented the neuroprosthesis. In their promo materials and talks, they talk about advancing technology to aid people with paralysis. I think we have a chance with Neuralink of being able to restore uh, full body functionality to someone who has a spinal cord injury. Um, meaning, I think, I think we have a chance, I emphasize a chance of being able to allow someone who um, cannot walk or use their arms uh, to be able to, to walk again. Which is cool and good and we need more of that. But it's also something that scientists have been working on for literally decades. And many researchers in the field have expressed frustration that Musk throws these flashy events where he gives dramatic speeches about neuroprosthetics like they're new or innovative ideas. All right, welcome to the Neuralink product demo. I'm really excited to show you what we've got. I think it's going to blow your mind. During a presentation in 2020, when Musk provided updates on Neuralink and their progress so far, he showed the audience how an electrode planted in a pig's brain could record the signals sent by neurons that controlled the movement of the pig's snout. A readout showed spikes every time the pig snuffled her nose. The, the beeps you're hearing are real-time signals from the Neuralink in Gertrude's head. So this Neuralink connects to neurons that are uh, in her snout, so whenever she snuffles around and touches something with her snout, the, that sends out uh, neural spikes, which are detected here. And like, don't get me wrong, that's 
pretty impressive. But it's also something that my friends and colleagues were doing on a regular basis when I was in grad school. And they were doing more than simply demonstrating that they could record signals. They were looking at ways that diseases or injuries might change those signals, or how those signals could actually be translated into meaningful or useful information. Honestly, this is my biggest beef with Neuralink. And really, it's more of a beef with Musk specifically. He's treating these ideas as if they are some spectacular, brand new invention that Neuralink came up with. And the ideas are spectacular, but they aren't brand new and they're not the invention of a couple of beefy tech bros in California. Rather, they're the ideas and technology that have been developed, built, and expanded upon for decades by hundreds of talented scientists and product developers at all levels of the process, both at academic institutions and at private companies. So as a neuroscientist looking in, it's pretty cringe when Musk tries to take so much credit. Now, that's not to say that nothing Neuralink is doing is impressive. I've been reading quite a bit about how excited some scientists are about the technology that Neuralink has developed so far, including what seems to be a pretty advanced implantable device for recording and sending electrical signals. The company calls these devices links, and they're about the size of a quarter, with wires that can be extended and embedded into the brain. Now, these devices can both record neuronal signals as well as send signals back into the brain. Neuralink also has sensors that can sense and record information about the brain environment around the device. And the devices can even be charged wirelessly. That last one is a pretty big game changer, as is the small size of the device, since most of the devices currently used to collect these electrical signals are fairly bulky, and they have to be hardwired, which requires them to have external components. When he first started working with Neuralink, Musk also brought in what some have called a sewing machine for your brain which he claims will be able to stitch flexible electrodes into brain tissue. This approach could be huge. Thinner, more flexible electrodes embedded in the brain could help eliminate issues like blood vessel damage. And they might be more sustainable long-term since they can bend and move with the brain rather than sloshing around causing damage. All of these innovations, transmitting data and charging without wires and thin, flexible electrodes that cause less disruption to the brain are just what scientists need to start developing the next generation of brain implants as they continue to pick apart the mysteries of the brain. But unfortunately, Improving the hardware doesn't do that much to address the real challenges currently facing the advancement of BCIs. Uh, yes, I think uh, in the future you will be able to save and re replay memories. Essentially, if, if you have a whole brain interface, everything that's encoded in memory, you could, uh, you could upload. You could basically store your memories um, as a backup and restore the memories. Um, and ultimately, you could potentially download them into a new body or into a robot body. The future is going to be weird. Thousands of researchers at universities and biotech companies around the world are tackling the challenge of developing more realistic and functional neuroprosthetics. But this is a serious challenge that can't be figured out with a handful of investor dollars in one hand and some fancy tech in the other. Because the real challenge is that we still just don't know all that much about how the brain works. So much so that we're still a long way off from having fully realistic prosthetic arms and legs, let alone implant technology that lets us record and rewind our memories or beam the internet directly into our brains. Consider the absurd vastness of our brains. We have around 100 billion neurons in our heads, with each neuron capable of making anywhere from just a few to tens of thousands of connections with other neurons. Your brain has more synapses than there are stars in the Milky Way galaxy. There are over 100 trillion synapses in the cerebral cortex alone. To put the magnitude of this into a real life context, scientists at the Allen Brain Institute recently worked on mapping the neurons and synapses in just one cubic millimeter of mouse brain, about 1,000 neurons and around a billion synapses. To do this, they had 
five electron transmission microscopes running continuously for five months, collecting more than 100 million images of 25,000 slices of mouse visual cortex. It took them a further three months to put that data together into a single 3D image, a total of two petabytes of data from just one millimeter of a mouse brain. That's like smaller than a grain of rice. Now, many scientists are interested in and are working toward mapping the entire human brain in a similar fashion, but like, holy cats, that is going to take so much time and will produce so much data. And even once that map is created, what does that actually tell us? Just having the map doesn't give us the full picture of how it all works. We've mapped the entire nervous system of the humble C. elegans worm, all 302 neurons and 7,600 synapses. But that map is just a snapshot of the worm brain, one moment in time, frozen. It doesn't really tell us that much about how the system is functioning in a dynamic living animal. Now, arguably, these kinds of maps are necessary for understanding how the brain functions, but they're not enough all on their own. The incredibly vast amount of data we would need to have about any individual brain, or even just any individual brain region, is currently impossible for us to collect or study. I mean, we don't even know exactly what information we need to recreate a brain. It's not enough to know where the neurons and their connections are or what kinds of neurotransmitters they use. Where are memories even stored? We know that recalling memories activates certain cells and synapses, but that's not necessarily the substrate of memory itself. And all of this isn't even accounting for the brain's glial cells, the other half of the brain that, while they might not be electrically active, are critical for supporting the growth, development, and signaling of neurons. What about the glial connectome? Do the dynamics of those cells matter when it comes to things like guiding movement, determining our personalities, or recalling a memory? As someone who studied glia, I gotta tell you, we know very little about them. This complexity is one of the things that I find incredibly exciting about the human brain. So it's pretty irritating when a bumbling billionaire like Musk acts like it's a simple problem to solve. We just don't really understand the human brain very well at all. I've heard it framed this way. If the human brain were simple enough for us to understand, we would be too stupid to understand it. But okay, let's imagine that our technology continues to improve and decades from now, we're able to amass huge amounts of data quickly to make the size of this issue more manageable. Beyond these challenges of scope, there are also some practicalities that even Neuralink's cool new tech hasn't quite been able to overcome. Brains are squishy and sensitive. They don't really like it when you stick things in them. Most implantable electrodes, like those used to study and operate neuroprosthetic devices, eventually become non-functional either due to local tissue scarring that blocks the electrodes or due to corrosion on the devices themselves. Now, the flexible ribbon-like electrodes I mentioned earlier might help reduce some of those issues, but I'd honestly be shocked if it eliminated them entirely. Neuralink hasn't reported any details on how long they've left electrodes implanted in animals or how well they functioned over time or whether or not there was any damage left behind after their removal. And these are not insubstantial questions when it comes to developing technology that will integrate our brains with AI. So let's talk about all of this in the context of what Neuralink is currently trying to accomplish. First, they're working on developing more realistic neuroprosthetics. Very cool and good, a noble goal. Researchers have already developed some pretty impressive tech on this front. We're talking robotic hands that can be controlled with the brain thanks to electrodes implanted directly into the motor cortex and can receive sensory feedback via specialized sensors and additional electrodes implanted in the sensory cortex. Right now, these are pretty imperfect arts. It is very, very difficult to place these electrodes in exactly the right spot in the brain because Again, we haven't perfectly mapped out the cortex, 
and everyone's brain is a little bit unique. Usually, the sensations people feel from these devices are more akin to tingling, pressure, or poking than it is to the precise feeling of a fluffy cat's fur or a wet washcloth. Often, the felt location of the sensation doesn't quite match up to its actual location. Like if the sensor is on the pad of the prosthetic thumb, the sensation it provides might be felt in the middle of the thumb or in the palm. And these devices don't generally transmit information about things like temperature or nociception, which is the perception of pain. On top of that, the devices are still pretty bulky. As I mentioned earlier, most of the electrode arrays still have to be hardwired to record and process data. Plus, much of this technology is prohibitively expensive. All of these issues are real problems that I think Neuralink and other companies like it could reasonably address. I hope we see movement and progress in that direction. Now. Do I feel confident that Neuralink will be able to restore full body motion as Musk has claimed it will? We already know how to do this, uh, implant electrodes into the motor cortex of the brain, um, and then bypass the, the severed section of the, of the spine and have uh, effectively local microcontrollers near the muscle groups. It could restore full limb functionality. Not particularly, but if they join forces with the many scientists and institutions working toward this goal, I think they might be able to get us a good way down that road. What about some of the more grandiose claims and goals that Musk has proclaimed? You will be able to save and re replay memories. You could upload, you could basically store your memories um, as a backup. Then could I, in the digital gym, yes. could I make him a skilled Mandarin speaker or a mm -hmm. tuba player yes. and re-upload it to him? Yeah. As people get older, they lose their memory. And so it's saying it's like, it's incredibly sad when a mother forgets her own children, um, and that can be solved too. Could you know? imagine that one day we would be able to download our human brain capacity into a Optimus? Yes. Well, let's think about that whole record and rewind memories thing again. It's kind of hard to record a memory if you don't know what a memory is or where it is. To me, this prospect feels as big and as unlikely as being able to upload a person's mind to a computer. There's just so much we don't know yet about the brain and how it works and how all those cells and molecules come together to make a memory or make a human mind. Plus, this doesn't even address the ethical implications of this sort of thing. It's like Elon saw that one Black Mirror episode and said, yeah, let's do that. Like, if you can rewind or record a memory, can you also manipulate it? Are we going to start deep faking our personal histories? Will Inception become a documentary? If you can steal an idea from someone's mind, why can't you plant one there instead? Just because I like to rag on Elon, let's zoom out a little bit further. Musk has claimed that Neuralink will eventually enable humans to communicate telepathically. You literally could fundamentally change the way human yeah. beings interface with each other. You wouldn't need to talk. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so scared of that, but so excited about it at the same time. Is that weird? And he's not thinking just like transmitting texts into each other's heads. Oh no. He thinks we'll be able to just project thoughts into each other's minds. How many years before you don't have to talk? Maybe like five years, five to 10 years. That's quick. That's really quick. That's, that's the best case scenario. No talking anymore in five years. Best case scenario. <laughs> But um, 10, 10 years more like it. Skipping right past how invasive that could end up being. I mean, can you imagine having a pop-up ad beam directly into your brain? Musk clearly doesn't realize that we don't even know what a thought is. I do think it's likely that what we consider to be a thought is encoded in the biology of the brain, in all of those cells and molecules bumping around but we are nowhere near being able to decipher that in any kind of meaningful fashion. And he thinks we can just, what, stick a few electrodes in there and suddenly we figured it out? It also seems like a part of his motivation is to directly integrate our brains with AI technologies. He really wants us to achieve symbiosis with AI, as he puts it. 
And some of the articles I read indicate that this comes from a place of fear, that without something like Neuralink to let us access and control AI technologies, we'll end up slaves to our robot overlords. What is your biggest fear? You know, artificial intelligence gone wrong is a, a big concern. But to me, this highlights a fundamental misunderstanding that Musk seems to have about the brain. It's like, think of it as like a bunch of circuits and there's some like circuits that are broken and we can like uh, fi fix those circuits, it's a substitute for those circuits. You could also save state, like save your brain state, like like a save game in a video game and restore that state into a biological being if you, if you wanted to in the future. A brain is not a computer. Thoughts and memories are not files on a hard drive. It is not so simple as to say that we can just plug our brains into a computer and run some algorithms to connect our minds to the cloud. You can't solve blindness or paralysis by writing enough code. And even if you could, would you want to? Modern society presents enough challenges with privacy and well being as it is. Do you really think it'll be better if we plug our brains directly into the internet? Do you think the companies behind that technology, including Neuralink, will really be focused on the best interests of their users? Or will they be focused on doing whatever makes the most profit? Remember that Musk is a billionaire, and you don't become a billionaire by accident, even if the foundation of your wealth is intergenerational. Elon Musk is not a neuroscientist, but many of the people who work for him are. In fact, I would guess there are many very talented, very smart neuroscientists who work at Neuralink. But even that working relationship is apparently on shaky ground. It sounds like Musk has been frustrated by the slow progress at Neuralink, which just further demonstrates his lack of understanding of how complex the brain really is. While Musk originally announced that he wanted to start human testing in 2020, Neuralink is still testing their tech in monkeys and pigs, and as of mid-2022, they have haven't yet launched any human trials. There are tons of articles out there indicating a lot of chaos behind the scenes at Neuralink too. Six of their original eight founders and many of Neuralink scientists have left the company, which isn't too crazy for a startup that's six years old, but still raises a few eyebrows. Employees have described the internal environment as high pressure, with leadership making unrealistic demands of the technology and of their employees, including impossible timelines. This might be the crux of the issue at Neuralink as a whole. Musk wanted to dive into neuroscience with a typical tech bro attitude. Move fast and break things, you know? Except you don't really want to move fast or break things when you're dealing with the human brain. And no matter how many millions Musk pours into the project, he simply can't erase the fact that we know very, very little about how the brain works. And even with all the money in the world, it will take a lot of time and a lot of scientists to figure it all out. So that's why I find the hype around this to be so annoying. Not just because Elon Musk is involved and is a terrible person, but also because it feels like he's playing a more evil, less charismatic version of John Hammond from Jurassic Park. Top of the line, spared no expense. Spared no expense. Spared no expense. What Elon really needs to do is just take a seat, stop trolling Twitter, and sit still long enough to listen to some actual neuroscientists for a change so that Neuralink can start using their cool new technology for good. While Neuralink is still a long way off from letting us plug our brains into the internet and download new skills matrix style. I know Kung Fu. Show me. There are other better ways to help your brain learn. Enter Brilliant, an online STEM learning platform full of interactive lessons for people from 10 to 110. Brilliant's hands-on approach lets you learn by doing, 
teaching you how to think and solve problems with fun, interactive lessons in STEM. No brain chips required. When I was a student, while I always wanted to learn more about computer science, I really struggled to engage with the material. I could never manage to link the equations and commands I saw printed in textbooks to actual practical knowledge of how to use them. So Brilliant's Computer Science Fundamentals course has been a great way for me to finally get started with learning how to code. And I'm already learning so much. For instance, computers can make countless decisions every second. But did you know most of these decisions can be broken down into very simple processes? Brilliant's Computer Science Fundamentals course explains this kind of procedure with easy to understand visuals like this decision tree, letting me tackle big topics one simple explanation at a time. If you're into Neuralink and what they're hoping to accomplish, but you don't already have any coding experience, you should definitely check this out. Understanding the fundamentals of computer science will be the key to developing those world-changing algorithms that will need to actually achieve that AI symbiosis and prevent the inevitable robot overlord takeover. And if you, like me, would rather focus on other approaches to understanding the brain, Brilliant has tons of other topics and learning paths for you to check out. Just pick a course you're interested in and get started. To get started for free, visit brilliant.org slash neurotransmissions or click on the link in the description. The first 200 of you will get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription, so don't wait. Hopefully the Musk stands haven't completely overwhelmed the comment section of this video with support for their favorite wealthy white guy. If you're here just because you're curious about this sort of thing, I'd love to hear what you think about Neuralink and their goals. Would you let Elon Musk put a microchip inside your head? Do you want to become an AI cyborg and connect your brain to the cloud? Are there other things that excite you about Neuralink? Personally, I'm already addicted enough to my smartphone and I don't need to become even more plugged into the internet. Leave your thoughts in the comments below. Thanks for watching this episode of Neurotransmissions. Until our next transmission, I'm Ali Astrocyte. Over and out.